All right, hello, this is the Club of the Man 1993 speaking. I know it has been a while since I last talked to you guys or last uploaded a video, but, um, I, anyways, so, since I haven't done a video for a while, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I was doing my baseball stuff, and of course I wanted to take a break from that for a little bit, because there is a lot of highlights to it. So, instead, I found an old game I used to love playing when I was little, because, you know, it's summertime now, and I love to go outside and do things, and one thing I like to do is shoot basketballs. And I started thinking I used to like playing backyard basketball a lot when I was, when I was younger. Now, the only backyard basketball game I have is Backyard Basketball 2004. So, I thought it would be a little bit neat as I took a March Madness bracket and I figured out what teams would play which teams. So, with, with that, I, I put together 16 teams that did 16 season plays. And for my next few videos, I'm going to be doing something called Backyard Basketball Madness, which is going to be pretty much a spectator game for... I, 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 I had the computer... Be, be both teams, and I, I won't play at all. I'll just watch, and we'll see um, who can um, who can win backyard basketball madness. Now there's 16 seeds, of course, and I have it in order by um, how many points they scored as a team. Doesn't mean that they're the best team, but it just is just my way of separating it out. So without further ado, I will first go over the rules for the season. Alright, first I'm going to go over the rules of the tournament. All games will be played at Tech State University, I chose. I chose this field because I thought it looked the more, most professional, and since this, this is a tournament and some very good players, I thought Tech State University is the most professional looking field. As far as the game setup goes, I have my little pet peeves with these things, so... As far as difficulty goes, when I have usually when I play backyard basketball, I used to, I usually, or any, mostly any other game usually, I like to put the difficulty on medium. Well, well if it's like, like a computer versus computer thing, it's not like, like back in my Wolfenstein games, which of course I put everything on the hardest difficulty because it's the way it matter and I want it to be challenging. But um, anyways, for a like, game, like, game like backyard basketball, when you have computer versus computer playing each other, or even usually during my season plays, I usually put the difficulty on medium because... Usually, um, because on medium, it seems like it's like, like like a fair advantage, because if I put it on easy, then, you know, one team's going to be making all their shots, and the other team is going to be missing all their shots, and it's not playing how how their um, their ratings really show them, and on hard, it'd be like the complete opposite. So, so medium, I think, has like a fair advantage. Like, the players are playing like exactly how, how good of, of a player that they really are, and everything, so it would be a fair game. So that's why I put it on medium. Quarter length, I put it at two minutes because I am that impatient and I would go nuts. It would take, it would take me so long because I want to get back to other things like my baseball highlights and stuff. Fatigue, I usually turn off because with computer on computer, I won't be able to make any substitutions unless the player fouls out. But um, fatigue also, it just affects, affects the game. Power-ups, there's not there's no real power-ups in mobile basketball, I mean no slam dunks, but the only thing you wanna wanna watch a tournament with a bunch of like random little squares trying to make players go faster with like, like a hot hand or or butterfingers or ice cream truck, whatever the heck you wanna call those stupid little power-ups, I hate the power-ups, that's why I usually turn it off. And also with with, with this the fast the continuous like speed power up or heck it's called, you have to unlock, that just causes too many fouls. I usually keep fouls and violations on because I, I, don't know, I like I like free throws and stuff, and I want to keep them. But out of bounds, I usually keep off because once again, I'm very impatient. And just going back to the time. All right. So first, I thought I would introduce you to all the players on each team, but that would just make this video very long, and yeah, it would be a very big of a mess to edit right now. But instead, I'm actually going to um, talk about my predictions and also share which team has which seat. So, the 16th seed team is the Miami Heat with 970 points. The 15th seed is the Boston Celtics with 1,116 points. The 14th seed team is the Glutinous Ball Hogs, well, sorry, Glutinous Ball Hogs, I always pronounced that wrong, 
with 1,150 points. 13th seed is the Denver Nuggets with 1,185 points. The 12th place seed is the D Dynamic Dime Droppers with 1,229 points. Um, the 11th seed is the Amazing Air Squadron with 1,242 points. 10th seed is the Golden State Warriors with 1,284 points. The 9th seed is the Portland Trailblazers with 1,289 points. 8th seed is the Washington Wizards with 1,293 points. The 7th seed is the Thrifty Three Pointers with 1,324 points. 6th seed is the Milwaukee Bucks with 1,327, just a three point difference. And then very close also is the fifth seed, the Sharpshooting Shorties, with 1,331 points. The fourth seed is the Indiana Pacers, with 1,348 points. The third seed is the Los Angeles Clippers, with 1,368 points. Second is the Magnificent Monsters, with 1,404 points. And the number one seed, with just 1,409 points, five more points than the number two seed, the Los Angeles Lakers with 1,409 points. Now I will share my predictions for this tournament. In round one, or what I'm calling the Sweet 16, the first match will be the number one seed Los Angeles Lakers versus the number 16 Miami Heat. Now, of course, I mean, I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Lakers for this match, not only because of the number 16 seed, but you know, the Lakers have three starters in Andre Scordon. Jay Manning, and Alex teacher Pinnacus, who are all three very dangerous shooters. And all of them are going to be able to out, outlast the tall Miami Heat. Although they have height, they don't have too many great shooters. They only have, really have one shooter in Chipper Black. But you can't rely on just one person to win. So, because of that, the Los Angeles Lakers will advance to the Elite Eight. The second match will be the number 8 seed Washington Wizards and the number 9 seed Portland Trailblazers. I like both of these teams also, but I think the Washington Wizards are a little bit overrated. They are, they do have a very solid shooter in Maggie Mongo, who, who's their starting center, but usually they don't they probably will not be able to use her enough because of the the dangerous height of the of the Portland Trailblazers center, Connor Harrison. And the Portland Trailblazers are definitely stronger shooters than the Washington Wizards. So because of that, I'm going to choose an upset, and the number 9 seed Portland Trailblazers will defeat the number 8 seed Washington Wizards, and they will go to the Elite 8. The third match will be the number 5 team, the Sharpshooting Shorties, versus the number 12 Dynamic Dime Droppers. Now, once again, great shooting teams. Well, the Sharpshooting Shorties are all short people, but they all know how to shoot the three. They have two guys, well, they both usually start on, will be, will be their backups, who are pretty decent from underneath, but of course, points based on merit, the, the, all three of the starters are all just outside shooters, okay on the inside, but not, but even, but so dangerous on the outside. The dynamic dime droppers do have very two solid starters in Richard Morton, who is one of, I think, his second all time with 767 points. And another solid center, but he but he really could sure probably be playing outside in in the Argentina, but he should be playing outside. But there's nowhere else to put him on this in the starting lineup, and he's definitely the second best player on the team. But their guard Mark Clocks is not that solid of a player, and the Sharpshooting Shorties have a full advantage. And I think the Sharpshooting Shorties will advance to the Elite Eight over the Dynamic Dime Droppers. And then the fourth match is the Indiana Pacers versus the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets have a bunch of weaknesses. They do have their strong player in, in George Herbert, who's their starting center, who's not afraid to also do any, any work from the outside, but they don't really have a starting forward. And also, their, um, their guard, your V. Harang, is too slow to be a guard, despite being a decent shooter. But the Indiana Pacers are a tall team who have the all-time points leader in Oscar Holmes with 790, and also, the rest of their starters are very decent shooters and strong players. So because of that, I am choosing the number 4 seed Indiana Pacers to advance to the Elite 8. The 5th match will be the number 6 seed Milwaukee Bucks and the number 11 seed Amazing Air Squadron. Now don't get me wrong, the Amazing Air Squadron, despite being the number 11 seed, is actually probably one of the tougher teams in, in out of the 16. 
They are they have a great starting line, lineup with Carl Lowerskills, their left-handed starting guard, who's a great outside shooter and also just a great guard altogether. And then Brad Baghdad, who is their team surprise starting forward after starting the year on the bench. And a strong center in Dan Butterwinkles. However, though, the Milwaukee Bucks have definitely stronger players. They have a starting a starting guard in pink-haired Curtia Warts, and um, they have a, a strong outside shooter in Harold Humphrey Ruggiero, and then also a strong center in Don Rendon, who is not afraid to shoot outside either, and he's very aggressive inside. So, because of that, I am choosing the Milwaukee Bucks to go to the Elite Eight. And then the number three seed Los Angeles Clippers will face the number 14 seed, the Gluttonous Ball Hogs. The Ball Hogs, despite being number 14 seed, are actually a very strong, one of the stronger teams. They have Aaron Saley as their starting guard, and they have a very one of the strongest centers in the league in Chris Castilla. However, though, once again, like the Nuggets, their forward position is weak because they don't they don't really have a starting forward. So the Los Angeles Clippers have height. They have Yorvani Guiardo, who's one of the st- who's the third best shooter of all time with 738 points. Because of this, I think the Clippers, with their height advantage and their strong shooter, I think the Clippers will be able to advance to the to the next round over the Ball Hogs. Then the next teams that face each other are number seven seed Thrifty Three Pointers and the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors have a strong shooter, like most of these teams, in Stephon Marbury. But the rest of their positions always all have weaknesses. Their center, Andrew Trees, is too slow. And then their guard, despite being very fast and a great ball hander in BB Lovejoy, is not a strong shooter. So really, the only shooting they have on this team from the outside is Stephon Marbury. The thrifty three-pointers, on the other hand, have um, Carlos Diego, a tall left-handed guard who's really great from the three. Aaron Benson, who's one of the best shooters of all time at their forward, and despite not being the tallest center out there, Derek Taines is definitely a great center to have in their starting lineup. So, I'm going with the number 7 seed, the thrifty three-pointers. The final match of the first round, also known as the Sweet 16, is the number 2 seed, Magnificent Monsters, and the number 15 seed, Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics, I think, are a little bit underrated because they go off to a little bit of a slow start, but they have some of their best, the best players in their lineup. And Coyle Scout, their starting center, who can play all over the place. Gugu Schnuggy, the team's best shooter. Well, I mean, Coyle, Coyle Scout led, led the team in points with 402, but uh, Gugu Schnuggy is still one of the best lights out three point shooters of all time, despite only 300, 332 points. But their guard, Shane Olo, cannot shoot for the life of himself. So that creates a big weakness in their starting lineup, and most of their bench players are not strong enough to be starting starting players. The Magnificent Monsters have Mike Ruggiero, Stephanie Ruggiero, and Melissa Choir in their starting lineup. All three are three of the strongest shooters of all time. With this, the Magnificent Monsters will be able to beat the Boston Celtics. Now, to the Elite Eight. The first match for my predictions I have is the Los Angeles Lakers, the number one seed, versus the number nine seed Portland Trailblazers. This will be a tough match. One thing that's going to probably make a huge difference, maybe, is the fact that the Lakers have a shorter center in Alex Heatrapinicus, who's nowhere else to play him in the starting lineup. And the Portland Trailblazers have a tall center in Connor Harrison, and they have their two great outside shooters in Marcus Jackson and Tyler Denzinger. However, the Lakers are still the stronger shooting team from the outside, and I still think it will be able to overcome their small weakness of their starting center. So, even though it's going to be a close match, I predict the Los Angeles Lakers to advance to the Final Four over the Portland Trailblazers. Then we have, for the Elite Eight, my prediction, the Sharpshooting Shorties, number 5 seed, and the number 4 seed, the Indiana Pacers. These teams are great shooter, shooting teams. Despite being short, the Sharpshooting Shorties are in the 5th, highest scoring team of all time. However, though, the Indiana Pacers are pretty much on the same belt as them, but they have the height advantage over them, creating a little bit more pressure for the shorties. The Indiana Pacers definitely though have don't aren't as great shooters, but they're good enough. And I think with the height advantage, I think the Indiana Pacers will be able to advance to the the final four over the sharp shooting shorties. Then for the, the third match in the Elite Eight, I have the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Los Angeles Clippers. 
this is going to be another tough match. But of course, the Los Angeles Lakers, their two starters, Chin Moon Spoon, who's a decent center, and he's decently strong enough, but then their, their guard, Craig Coyle, is not that great of a, of a shooter. Most of their points come from their, their forward, Giovanni Giardo. The Milwaukee Bucks have decent shooters in their starting lineup, better than, than, than the Clippers. They do have Harold Humphrey Ruggiero, their best shooter, Don Rendon, who is ver a very strong player, and he's not afraid to work the outside, and also Curtia Wartz, sorry, Curtia Wartz, she definitely was a big star who who stepped up during the finals, which got her the starting starting guard job over Anthony Ruggiero. So I think the number six seed Bucks will pull off an upset and beat the number three seed Los Angeles Clippers to go to the final four. The last Elite Eight match is the Thrifty Three Pointers and the Magnificent Monsters. The Monsters are number number two seed, the three pointers number seven seed. Once again, both of these teams have three very strong shooters in their starting lineups. However, though, the big, the big difference is going to depend on that center position, I believe, with Mike Ruggiero being a tall, sh a tall shooter and um, Derek Taines not being as tall. Despite being a strong center, I still think it's not going to be good enough and the Magnificent Monsters will advance to the Final Four. The two matches in the Final Four... The first one would be the Los Angeles Lakers and the Indiana Pacers. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers are a good team, but like the thrifty three-pointers, they have a shorter center. And the thing is, is he's not probably that strong enough to play a center in Alex Teacher Pinnacus. The Indiana Pacers, though, I think they have decent enough shooters, and with the help of Oscar Holmes' hot hand, who has 790 points all time, the most in any of, out of all the 16 teams, and all the players in my league, I still think that the Indiana Pacers are definitely the stronger team, and I think they'll pull off the upset and advance to the championship match over the Los Angeles Lakers. The other match in the Final Four is the Milwaukee Bucks and the Magnificent Monsters. These teams are strong teams, but I still believe that that the um the, the Magnificent Monsters are the stronger team with their three deadly shooters, and I think they will go to the championship. So in the championship match, my prediction is the number four seed Indiana Pacers and the number two seed Magnificent Monsters. I think again, the Indiana Pacers, you know, most of their players are tall. Not everybody, but most of them are tall players. And I think with the height advantage, the Indiana Pacers will be able to just beat the Magnificent Monsters. And the Indiana Pacers, the number four seed, will be the champion of backyard basketball madness. So, now you've been introduced to everything that's going to be going on in the Backyard Basketball Madness Tournament on my, on my YouTube account, The Club of the Man 1993. We are now going to get ready for the first match, which will be the number 16 seed, the Miami Heat, will be the away team. And the home team will be the number 1 seed, Los Angeles Lakers. And my prediction is the Los Angeles Lakers will blow away the Miami Heat. Now, after each game, I will... I will have a, a little couple minute segment on me talking about what I think went right and what went wrong during the match for these teams. Will we see some upsets? Will we see some great basketball? After all the sky reports that I've told, I've told you before about everybody, I hope that this is an exciting tournament on my YouTube channel. So subscribe and keep in touch because you'll be watching Backyard Basketball Madness. Good luck to all teams out there.